so in this C++ video, we're going to put a few things together that we used in previous videos. We're going to work with a database. We're going to work with FireMonkey. We're going to use the Visual Live Bindings Designer in Wizard. And we're also going to use Actions. In the Help and the Doc Wiki, you'll find information about Live Bindings. There's whole sections on Live Bindings for Delphi and C++. As you saw in previous videos, I used the Visual Live Binding Designer to do some of the work. You can also leverage using live bindings and actions lists. There are some built-in actions that are predefined to work with live bindings and a database. So we'll see those. And there's also uh, tutorials and examples that ship with the product. So let's say file new, FireMonkey desktop application. Let's connect to a database. We'll put a SQL connection component down. We'll choose the connection string. Let's just use that same employee database. Make sure we can connect to it. Yep, it's okay. Right mouse click, bring up the Live Bindings wizard. We're going to link a, a grid with the data source. We'll just use a, a string grid in this case. And we're going to connect it to a bind source DBX. And we've got the connection, the driver's interbase, uh, connection name is employee. I can use tables and or queries or store procedures or a server method. And let's just uh, put in a SQL statement. And we can test the command, make sure it's OK. And then go next, let's add a, a data source navigator. Now we've got the navigator, we've got the bind source, and we've got the grid. We can also put uh, fields up here and add other things. So for example, we could right mouse click and use the live binding wizard to link a control with a field. And let's just take the, the T edit and we'll connect it to the bind source we already have. And we can take the customer name, for example, and add a label on the control. So here now is our customer. We can put the label in front, and as we're moving along, we'll see the customer name for the selected customer show up. We'll put four buttons so we can use the buttons for moving around, as well as using the navigator. And then we're going to associate with each of those buttons uh, actions. So let's put the labels. This is our first. This is our previous. Here's our next, our next, and our last. And then we can put an action list down. Now that we have an action list, we can go and for each of the buttons, create an action or choose from a standard action. So in this case, we're going to choose from a live bindings standard action. This is the first button. So we want to do the bind navigator first. Uh, for previous button, we want to go and say it's a standard action, live bindings, navigate prior, new standard action, live bindings, next. And for the last button, you guessed it the new standard action, live bindings, last. Now for each of these actions, we can bring up on the action list, the action list editor, select all of them, because we need to set the data source that these actions are going to work with. And I only have one, it's called bind source DBX. The other way you can see this is expand the action and see if you have a data source showing up for each one of them. Now the navigator already has that built in to it. But if you don't want to have a navigator and you want a different user interface, you can do it this way. You could even hook gestures to actions and reuse the actions. So let's run this example. And we can use the navigator to move around. And also notice when I'm on the first row that the first button, which is associated with the action that's tied to the data source, I can't go before the first. So that button is disabled. So is the prior button because it makes no sense. You can't go to customer minus one. But the next and last buttons are, are enabled. And I can go and click, and it's firing the actions. Notice the customer name is, is updating. Now these buttons for first and prior are enabled. Next, let's go to the last. Again, now that we're at the last, there's no new last row in the data set. And there's no way to move next. So the actions that are tied to the live bindings know that there's nothing else to do. So they've disabled the buttons. So I didn't have to write any special code in C++. So I didn't have to write any special code to know that I'm at the last row in my row set from my SQL select statement. The actions are taking care of that and the bindings for me so that I don't have to write any special code. And now when I move back a little bit, then notice that uh, they're enabled again. Same thing in the navigator, if I move to the end, these are disabled. If I move to the beginning, these buttons are disabled. So a nice way to bring together 
uh, database operations, live bindings, the visual live binding designer, and then associating actions with operations and doing it all visually at design time rather than having to write code. That way you can spend more time on your own logic and spend less time writing code for something that you're going to use all the time. And again, all of this works on 32-bit, 64-bit windows, and on the Macintosh, the actions still fire. We're at the end, we're at the beginning, the actions are working underneath, and the bindings are working. So that's just a quick look at putting several things together, using a database, using live bindings, adding actions into your application, and binding those actions to the data source. So have fun with C++ Builder, live bindings, and actions.